In this video, we're going to talk about differential equations, and I want to introduce the major ideas of this topic. This is actually the second video in my playlist in my full course on differential equations. The link to that and the accompanying open source textbook is down in the description. Now in the first video, I just gave a loose introduction to what differential equations were about, but in this video, I really want to formalize precisely what it is that we're talking about. So let's begin with an example of a differential equation. y triple prime plus ty prime sine of y double prime equal to zero. So this is an equation, it's got both sides. It's got some variable t and derivatives of y with respect to t. It's a differential equation because it's an equation involving derivatives. To be a little bit more precise, we're going to begin by talking about ordinary differential equations. And in this description, on the left-hand side, I have the nth derivative of y. When you put the n in brackets and put it as a superscript, this denotes the nth derivative, not to be confused with y to the power of n. This is the nth derivative of y with respect to t. And then on the right-hand side, I have some relationship, some function that I haven't specified, between a dependent variable that I'll call t, sometimes t, sometimes x, and a dependent variable y and its derivatives, y, y prime, y double prime, all the way potentially up to y to the n minus one derivatives. And so your nth derivative with respect to t depends on the previous derivatives, the lower order derivatives, and the independent variable t. Now, differential equations have different types of properties, and one of them is referred to as the order of a differential equation. And the order of a differential equation is just the highest derivative that appears. So in my example where there was a y triple prime, that y triple prime is the highest order of a derivative, and so we say the order of that differential equation is 3. And in the general case, that is an nth order differential equation. The highest derivative that appears is the nth derivative. And indeed, order is going to be a distinguishing feature for us in our study of differential equations. We're going to begin by studying first order differential equations where there's only one derivative involved. This is going to take actually quite a bit of development, and then we'll move to higher order differential equations after that. Now, you'll notice that I call this an ordinary differential equation. So what are the other options? Now, we're not going to talk about these until quite a long time from now, but the other big category is so-called partial differential equations. In this equation, Schrodinger's equation from quantum mechanics, one of the most important differential equations that there is, we have some function that depends on both x and t. And then you have derivatives with respect to t and derivatives with respect to x. They're partial derivatives now. So when your differential equation is involving multiple variables and they're partial derivatives, then we call it a partial differential equation. If there's just one independent variable, then it's an ordinary differential equation. And indeed, we're going to be focusing on ordinary differential equations, at least for now. The other complexity that can happen, and again, this is going to be something for the future, is systems of differential equations, where you have not one, but multiple different differential equations. These are the equations for the SIR model that helps us study pandemics. I actually have a couple of videos on this model, this system of differential equations, so you're welcome to check that out if you so wish. Regardless, our focus is going to be on ordinary differential equations like this one. Okay, so now that you have a differential equation, what can you do with it? Well, the main thing we're trying to do is to solve a differential equation. So what exactly does that mean? Take, for instance, the function e to the t. I'll call this y1 because this is going to be the first of multiple solutions to this differential equation. My claim is that e to the t solves this equation. How do I know? Well, I'm going to plug it in, and I'm going to see that if I plug that in, so two derivatives of e to the t is just e to the t, then I subtract off one derivative of e to the t times four, it's just four e to the t, and then plus three times, plug it in, e to the t, and indeed, e to the t minus four e to the t plus three e to the t, yeah, that adds up to zero. So yes, this satisfies the differential equation. That is, I take this function, I plug it into the differential equation, and if it satisfies it, then we're going to call it a solution. But I want you to note that in addition, I could put some other constant c out the front of it, some c1, because this is the first function I can talk about, c1 e to the t. And the equation is exactly the same. I mean, constants just come out of derivatives, so it's just a c1 in front of every term, and so that adds up to zero in just the same way. So we already have an infinite family of solutions, but it's actually even more complicated than that. 
Consider what I'll now call y2, which is some constant times e to the 3t. No longer e to the t, e to the 3t. Well, it's also a solution. Indeed, plug it in in the same way, and you're going to get 9 times the constant e to the 3t, then minus 12, the constant e to the 3t, and then plus 3, the constant, times e to the 3t, which adds up to 0. It's again a solution. So we've got a y1 and a y2. And then I'll actually leave it to you to verify, if you wish, that any combination, like if you add those two, that it's also going to be a solution. This is because derivatives are linear operators, is one way to put it. So the sum of them is going to result in the sum of the solution. 0 plus 0 is just going to be 0. And now I've gotten something that I'm going to isolate and refer to as the general solution. The general solution contains every possible solution to this differential equation. That is, any possible solution to this differential equation can be written as the combination of c1 times the e to the t and c2 times e to the 3t for different values of those constants. But, okay, there's a lot of questions here, like, how did I know what those solutions were, and how do I know that all of the solutions can be written in this way? Perhaps there's many other solutions that I haven't written down. Now, to the question of how do you find these solutions, like, how did I know e to the t and e to the 3t, this is a subject of our course. We're going to study that later on in later videos in this course. But for now, we can actually use technology to help us out. And the actual technology we're going to use comes from, and I'm very proud to say it, the first official sponsor of this math channel, which is Maple. What I can do with Maple Calculator, which is an app that you can install on your phone, and the links are down in the description, is I can just hand write out the differential equation that I'm trying to study. So I can hand write out y double prime minus 4y prime plus 3y equal to 0. Then if I open the app, I can hit the camera button and I can just take a picture of my equation and the Maple calculator will interpret it. And look what it does. It automatically spits out the general solution to this differential equation. If you didn't want to bother with taking a photo, it's also totally fine for you to type it in and to change the constants and see what the solutions are to any differential equation that you're interested in. And it's nice to know that, according to the Maple Calculator, this is all of the solutions. This is the general solution. Indeed, there's going to be a lot of theory that we'll develop later in the course as to how many solutions a different type of equation can have, and it's going to be very intimately connected to the order of the differential equation. Okay, so let's define this a bit more precisely. Now I want to talk about the solution to an ordinary differential equation. So I'll put up my generic ordinary differential equation. And then a solution to an ordinary differential equation is you telling me a specific function. I'm calling it here, for example, phi of t. And I'm saying that I'm going to assign y to be that specific function. And that specific function, when you plug it in everywhere, it's the same equation. Just I put phi everywhere instead of y. It solves that equation. So that's our precise definition of a solution. I'm going to give a second example of a differential equation now, y prime equals y times t squared. And this is just another differential equation, first order, and it has a general solution. y of t is a constant times e to the t cubed divided out by 3. So in this case, one infinite family. And again, I'm not going to go into how I solved this, but you can verify that it's a solution by taking the derivative, plugging it in, and seeing that it works. Now I really want to focus on that c value. So I want to give an extra piece of information. Suppose I told you that at time t equal to 0, y was 5, a so-called initial condition. I'm telling you what happens initially at time t equal to 0. Well, I could plug this in. So that would be 5 on the left-hand side equal to a constant e to the 0 if I plug in t equal to 0. e to the 0 is 1, and so I get that c was equal to 5. And this lets me rewrite what was originally a general condition with an arbitrary constant. I now get a very specific answer, y of t is 5 e to the t cubed divided by 3. This is referred to as an initial value problem. More generally, I would start with my differential equation as I have. But then in addition, I would specify initial conditions. What you actually have to do is if you have an nth order differential equation, so n derivatives, you have to specify n initial conditions y0, y prime of 0, all the way down to the n minus 1th derivative of y at 0, and you specify the values of those. When I say y of 0 is y naught, y naught is just my shorthand for some constant that will be specified. y naught prime is some constant that will be specified again. So whenever I write this little subscript 0, I call it naught, and I just mean by that it is a constant. 
So I have these initial conditions. I just tell you the values of the function and its derivatives at time t equal to zero. And collectively, that is known as an initial value problem, a differential equation together with initial conditions. And to solve an initial value problem, you're trying to find a solution that is not a general solution, doesn't have constants in it, doesn't express all the possible solutions to it. Now we're solving for the specific solution that not only satisfies the differential equation, but also satisfies all of these initial conditions. So in this video, I hope I have introduced the major definitions and delineations between concepts that we're going to see in differential equations. Of course, there's a lot more to talk about. We haven't even figured out our first method to solve a differential equation, but at least we've established our foundational terminology as we go forward in this course. So if you like this video, please do give it a like for the YouTube algorithm. We need to spread differential equations to everybody. It is such a cool subject. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and we're going to do some more math in the next video.